Uh, so what the program basically did is it told me that my chuck is out of balance by this much in this spot and by this much in this spot. We yeah. take it off, put it on our scale, and we have 1.1 ounces or 31 grams and 13 grams or 0.4 ounces. So now that we know the amount of weight discrepancy we have in our chuck and where it is, we have a couple of choices. We can leave magnets on there and hope that they don't interfere with stuff, but they're gonna collect metal shavings and whatnot. We could get a chunk of metal and weld it on. I'm guessing that most people don't want to weld on their chuck. Or we can remove weight 180 degrees from where our weight is. 180 degrees from the C position, we can remove 31 grams. And 180 degrees from the B position, we can remove 13 grams. Now, in a lathe, it's quite easy to find out where 180 degrees is. You simply put a tool in your lathe, put the tool up against your mark. Here's my C mark. And then I would simply use the cross slide. And now that I'm at the other side, I can actually use the tool to put a mark in my chuck at the 180 degree mark. Right here is 180 degrees from C. So we need to go minus 13 grams. We can do the same thing for the C position. Figure out where it is. Slide the cross slide across 13 grams. How do you figure out what that is? Okay, so what I did is I found an online calculator that tells me the weight of steel based on dimensions. So I've got a half inch hole, half inch deep, and the weight is 0 0.0. 277 pounds. Google tells me 0 0.0277 pounds is 0.4432 ounces. We need 0.4 ounces. So that's 0.44. So right there, I need to drill a half inch hole half inch deep. I am going to go ahead with this method, but if it were a flywheel or something that were rotating really fast, I would uh, melt it in my mill and mark it off exactly. But that's about center right there. There, I'll center punch it. You can't just go deeper when you're doing this. And the reason for that is you get diminishing returns. If I drill a half inch hole, half of an inch deep, that is going to give me a pretty good balance or a pretty good weight removal from this area. But if I just keep going deeper, the next half of an inch isn't going to affect the dynamic balancing in the same way. It will remove the same amount of static weight, so it'll remove 0.4 of, of a, an ounce. But when I rotate it, because the mass is closer to the center of axis, uh, it won't have the same effect on balancing on the plane.
I may need to come back in and drill a couple of 5 16 holes on each side of this or 3 8 holes. But for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is and then figure out what I've got to do to remove 1.1 ounces from the opposite side of my C position. Hey. Hi. Hi, buddy. Hi. I went to get you and I forgot I was making a video. Do you want to watch me drill some holes? So I drilled the pilot holes and now I need to drill them out to full size. What I might do eventually is take my milling machine and mill out that whole area. But for now, let's check it and see how close we are to zero. All right, that's one thousandths. So let's see if we can get it closer by adding a little bit of weight. We'll kind of sneak up on it. We have some lighter magnets here. Ow, I got pinched. As you can see, I still have one magnet on in the B position. I'm going to have to come back and drill a couple of more holes here. That was not enough. All right, so I figured I wanted to do a little bit more fine tuning. And so I ended up taking five of these. And we'll put our thing on zero, turn the lathe on. And as you guys can see, this is the result. So the reason we're having a bit of a discrepancy, a little bit of a hard time, is because when I checked with the weights, I stuck them on the face. And you need less weight like this to make a correction than you do if it is like this. So we're removing material from down in, and that weight makes less of a difference the further you go down in. So just to show you guys an example of what I'm talking about, with the weight on like this, the needle is almost perfect. Now I'll put the weight like this and we'll see what the difference is in the needle movement. So as you can see there, it made about probably a thousandth of an inch difference in the movement of the needle just by moving the weights from the top to the side. 13 grams again. So I need to remove that much more material away from this area. That's a heck of a lot of material removal right there. <laughs> Set that to zero, approximately. Come over here and show you. I've taken all the magnets off at the B location, or opposite of the B location, I should say, 180 degrees to it. I've got one half inch hole at half inch deep and two three eighths holes half inch deep. And then, over here, we've got a piece of Swiss cheese. Uh, over here, which is across from the C position, 180 degrees from where our C position was, I've got three half inch holes at half inch deep and two three eighths holes at half inch deep. Now, the gauge doesn't lie, so let's come over here. And that 
is pretty darn smooth. Pretty hard to argue with those results. That shows that the program works, the method works using, using the slow motion camera on the phone to uh, get an accurate reading increases your accuracy and uh, that's pretty awesome. That's a really good result. So seeing this method, a lot of people are probably going to be wondering whether you could balance a flywheel or perhaps uh, a fan or something like that. Yes and no. So the problem is that this lathe chuck doesn't have to be balanced terribly accurately. Uh, if you're balancing something like a flywheel, you would need something that was much more sensitive than this. So because the lathe itself is so heavy, it resists movement or vibration. It actually acts as a damper. So with three of these magnets, we have 0.2 ounces or 8 grams. If we take these and put them on a random place on our chuck, we should be able to turn this on and see a fairly large discrepancy in movement in the needle. And as you can see, that's about one thousandth of an inch. So a eight gram imbalance is only giving us one thousandth of an inch on that dial. So the problem is with a light rotating mass like a fan or even a flywheel that was a couple of pounds, you need to be within a gram or two. So if we're trying to balance something very accurately or something that was very light, we're going to run into an issue of sensitivity. We need the gauge to read off by a substantial amount with only a gram or two discrepancy on the rotating mass. So whether it's a fan or a flywheel or a brake rotor, whatever it is, we need a very small amount of rotating mass here to affect the needle. From this one spot, I removed about an ounce. Now, if you had an ounce of imbalance in a fan or a flywheel that was rotating at, you know, 1600 RPM, or in the case of a flywheel, many thousand RPM, uh, that would be completely catastrophic. So if I wanted to use this design or this principle to balance something like, say, a flywheel, say something like this, what I would want to do is simply have a shaft, mount it on a couple of bearings, and then support it on either springs or hang it and have it so that the motor was part of the assembly. Maybe I'll do another video on actually doing that. So if you have any suggestions on how you would do this differently, or if you have any advice on what would make this better or more accurate, or if you've done something like this yourself, leave a comment below. If you have questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. That's the end of this video and I'll see you guys next time.